Very good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to St. Peter and St. Paul this morning. Just to introduce myself, I'm Sally Musson. I'm a licensed lay minister in the parish here, and David Borkham, another of our minister, lay ministers, will be opening God's word to us later. It's uh, good to be with you, and good to be with those of you that are joining us out there on the live stream as well. So hi to all of you. I know who some of you are, so I can picture myself in your living rooms as well. And a particularly warm welcome if you're new or visiting. Do make yourselves known if, you're, if you haven't already been uh, spotted, so to speak, um, and it will be great to see you after the service. And for any that are viewing remotely, also, do make contact with us if you would like to do that. So do please be comfortable and sit or stand, whichever is most comfortable to you, whatever I encourage you to do. And I've also been privileged to be around the other churches this morning, so I was asked to bring in, uh, greetings from St. Saviour's and to St. Andrew's to you all here. So. so let's just pause for a moment as we prepare to worship together now. So let's open with a welcome, and if you respond, as through the service, in the words on the, in the bold type. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's do that one again, even twice as loud. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen. Great, I'll let you sing now. So if you're able, do please stand to sing. Name of all majesty. Jesus is Lord indeed. Let, please be seated. And let's pause for a moment from that uh, glorious song of praise as we prepare to come to God in confession and prepare our hearts 
and minds to lift those things on our hearts to him. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. And as we have confessed our sins, God wants to give us that assurance of forgiveness. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so continuing in an attitude of prayer, the special prayer for today, the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and in truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I'm now going to hand over to Jane and I think hopefully some helpers in due course for Together Time. Right, got double here. Double, double, yeah. Okay, so what, goodness me, it's all gone wrong. What could have happened to the chocolates? What could have happened, Martha? Do you think someone's eaten them? Not me. I mean, that never happens in my house. Someone might have eaten them. Well, do you know what? Could they, could they have removed themselves? Could they have got out themselves? What do you think, Annie? Do you think they could have got out uh, themselves? No. No, why not? Because... You, they can't move. Exactly, they're not alive, are they? They're not alive. Annie, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to have a sneaky joke on you, but thank you for your help. Do you want to go and sit back down with Mummy? Thank you for your help. Well, like Annie said, they couldn't have removed themselves. They're not alive, are they? But actually, in today's true story from the Bible, all the children and young people, we're going to be together upstairs, and we're going to discover when something went missing. Actually, when someone went missing and we're excited to be thinking today about the risen King Jesus whose dead body was in not in the empty tomb when his friends looked for him just like Annie looked inside there was nothing in there actually we're going to be seeing today how the resurrection is a wonderful news for all of us and we're going to be thinking particularly about what difference 
it makes in our lives. So shall I pray, and then we're going to sing together. Thank you, almighty God, for raising Jesus from the dead. And thank you for the difference that makes to our lives. Please open our hearts to learn truths about you, both upstairs and downstairs, that will transform and shape our lives. Please equip us with all we need to love, welcome, and teach the children and young people today. Amen. Well, we are going to, in a moment, uh, stand, and we're going to sing two songs uh, together. The first one has got action, so if anyone would love to join me, I would love to have you up here to help. Um, it's a song from Holiday Club that hopefully some of us might know. And then, children and young people, we will exit, and the rest of you will carry on singing. So do stand if you're able as we sing Super Saviour.
Do please be seated. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. So we can turn now briefly to think about those things that we are doing in Christ's name in this place. And we do have a few notices this morning, but the notice sheets that you've had are two weeks, so this is the second week of two, so to speak. So I'm not going to go through everything in great detail. But if you haven't had a prayer diary for April, then please do pick up one of those. Um, they are pink, and there are plenty of those in the foyer. But as, a, as, as two quick reminders, certainly, the Christians in sport, uh, Sports Quiz evening on Saturday the 27th of April here in the parish church. A great evening to be together. You don't have to be a sports guru to take part. It's all good fun. You can come as an individual and bring a non-Christian friend would be great, or you can come as part of a team. Do register via the website or the parish office. And Hope Explored is having another course three, three mornings after open house, beginning on the 20th of April. And that's great for any that are seeking to explore the faith or for those that would like to renew some of the basics of the Christian faith. So there again, do please think of that. And we're coming now to that time of year when we're thinking about our annual parochial church meeting, which is happening here on the 12th of May after the morning service. And before that, each church is going to hold its, well, it's not an annual meeting as such, but it will be holding a meeting to elect deputy wardens and lay representatives to the PCC. There are forms are pinned on the, note, on the door at the back of the church, so do please be praying for those nominations and elections. And they, as I say, they will happen briefly after the morning service, and it will be here for PMP on Sunday the 21st of April. And on that sort of theme, I'd like to encourage anyone who is a regular worshipper here who is not on our electoral roll. It would be great to have you on that roll. It's not a membership list as such, and I'm not offering you a, a welcoming golden handshake or anything like that. But it is good to uh, have you there. You can stand for election for offices. You can vote at the APCM. And it does help, in, in a sense, us to have a, a little bit more status in some ways if we have a, a good electoral role with the diocese and to help our dealings with them. So do please, there are yellow forms out there, and um, I'm, my role is electoral role officer, which is why I'm pushing that. Um, so do please come to me if you've got any queries. Um, but if you aren't on the role, um, that would be great if you wish to join. And if you are on the role, it would also be great to know when you change your contact details so we can have those up to date too. So let's just have a moment's quiet and a short prayer before we hear God's word and uh, David reads it to us. Heavenly Father, we come here today um, with various emotions and perhaps with various doubts too, but we pray now that you will open our hearts and minds as we hear God's word read to us and opened to us. May we be receptive to your message for us this morning. Amen. So thank you, Alex. You're going to bring God's word to us. Good morning. Today's reading is from John chapter 20, verses 24 to 31. You'll find it on page 1089 in the Pew Bibles. Page 1089. John chapter 20, beginning at verse 24. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. 
Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray before I start. Lord, help us not to doubt, but believe in you, because we ask it for your sake. Amen. I don't know if any of you have suffered from having a nickname that stuck with you. I'm not certain if I'm going to get away with this or not, but Wendy, my wife, was called poo when she was a child and that's after Winnie the Pooh I've got to say Um, probably a better name than Winnie Pooh Um, I think she might have been a little bit chubby when she was a child she's not throwing anything at me at the moment Uh, but she's not chubby now so I'll probably get away with it Uh, but in her last year at university up in York um, she took a kitten up with her and she transferred that name poo to the kitten and they even went to the point of a student house of calling it Trespassers W you have to be in on Winnie the Pooh to understand that but there you go so she transferred her nickname to her cat well we're thinking about the disciple Thomas this morning known as Doubting Thomas I think for that a little bit of a failure he wanted proof that Jesus had risen and throughout history our thoughts about him have probably been a little bit clouded by that nickname hanging over him. We were looking at in our Bible notes um, from Mark's Gospel earlier in the week and it was from Mark 16, 9, it's a bit in italics in Mark and it talks there about disciples who had seen Jesus Mary had seen Jesus, the two disciples on the road, Cleopas and his friend, who had seen Jesus going back and telling the other disciples and not being believed. But it's Thomas that has the name about doubting. Now the Bible gives us very little information about Thomas. The first three Gospels only list his name as one of the other 12 disciples, nothing else. It's only in John that we learn about him, Thomas, Didymus, a twin. Makes me wonder about the other twin. What happened to him? Did he believe in Jesus? Now we first hear about Thomas in John chapter 11, and it's the story of Lazarus, Jesus' friend, being very sick. Mary and Martha had sent for Jesus and hoped that he would come and visit his brother. And rather than dropping everything he was doing, he continued his ministry where he was. And a few days later, Jesus tells his disciples, Lazarus is dead. But he will return to Judea to see him. And the disciples were a bit upset because last time they went there, um, the, the Jews tried to kill Jesus by stoning him. Then in chapter 11, verse 16, Thomas says, let us also go with him, that we might die with him. That we might die with him. What an expression of support for Jesus. If you're killed, we'll die with you. If you're put in prison, we'd be in prison with you. 
I think to a bit that it proves that Thomas, rather than just being a doubter, was willing to take a risk. And it made me think, how much are we willing to risk to follow Jesus? I doubt there's much of a risk in coming to church today. How about giving away some of our money, some of our wealth, telling our friends and family that we believe in Jesus? That's a bit more risky. If, like Thomas, Jesus is an important part of our lives, may, might we be willing to take a bit more of a risk to grow as Christians? You know, one of the papers I, I look at quite often is Open Doors, and it gives reports often of people suffering throughout the world of their faith. And the open reports door for last year said that 5,621 Christians were killed for just believing in Jesus. 14,760 odd churches and Christian properties were attacked. We live in a part of the world where we don't face the opposition as much as places like North Korea and Somalia, Eritrea, Yemen, where there are really high rates of persecution. But just to say, where's the church growing most quickly? And it's in the places that are facing persecution. To believe means to suffer. How much of a risk are we willing to take to show our love for Jesus? That's my first point. The next time we hear about Thomas is on the night of the Last Supper. And Jesus shares these words with his disciples. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And we're here in verse 5, Jesus says, uh, Thomas says to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus says in verses 6 and 7, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Thomas took a risk, but he also wanted to understand who Jesus was. He knew he didn't have all the answers. He wanted to know more about Jesus and what he was talking about. And it made me think, how inquisitive are we? Do we just go along with the flow or do we want to know Jesus better? Are we happy just knowing Jesus on a superficial level? I had a rough count up of all the Christian books I've got on my bookshelves at home and there were over 400 there. Some of them barely opened, I've got to say to my shame. I wonder what the bottom line in being a Christian is for you. Is it reading the Bible every day? Is it praying a few minutes? Or is it more than that, that you want to question more about who Jesus is? Jesus was going somewhere Thomas wanted to be with him on that journey. 
So Thomas was a risk taker. He wanted to understand more so he truly could be with Jesus. The third time we meet Thomas is in the passage from John 20. It was Easter Sunday. The rest of the disciples were gathered together in a house and Thomas wasn't there. If you look in John chapter 20, verses 19 and 20, the passage before the one that was read to us by Alex. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and they received and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Thomas wasn't with them. And one of the first things that those disciples wanted to do was to tell Thomas about it and how excited they were. We'd seen the Lord, they said. And what was Thomas's reaction? Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. Was Thomas's reaction unexpected? Thomas loved Jesus. All his hopes and dreams had died with Jesus on the cross. It now seemed even his own fellow disciples were mocking him. How much are we willing to accept Jesus' resurrection without proof? Isn't that what the gospel's about? Faith, hope, a faith that's born in our hearts, not just in our heads. It would be interesting to know what the next eight days, seven or eight days, were like for Thomas. Did he sense a change in the other disciples? In his mind, Jesus was dead. He was missing out on the hope and joy which the risen Jesus was offering. The fourth time we hear about Thomas, the disciples were gathered together, the passage we have read to us. This time Thomas was with them, verse 26. Jesus didn't waste a moment to speak to Thomas. Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out, put your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And what was Thomas's reaction? He said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And this is the first time in the Bible Jesus is called God by anyone. Jesus had been called Lord, Teacher, Son of David, even the Son of God. Thomas called Jesus God. So was Thomas a failure? He had love for Jesus. He was willing to take a risk. He longed to know more about Jesus. And he let his moment of doubt inspire him to see Jesus as his Lord and his God. I think his example is a valid one for all of us to follow, regardless of our moments of doubt. Jesus had a ministry for Thomas. Didn't he establish a church in India. We don't know for sure, we think so. And God has a ministry for each of us to proclaim Jesus as our Lord and our God. And I wonder, in finding that ministry, are we willing to take a risk? Are we willing to find out more about Jesus? 
and to make our doubt certainty so that we can call Jesus our Lord and our God, just like Thomas did. Let's pray, and do pray this along with me if you're willing. Lord, we believe in you. Help us to remove any unbelief. Lord, we love you, yet not with a perfect heart, but as we are. Lord, we long to be close to you. Take away all that gets in the way. Lord, help us to trust you with our whole minds. Accept our faith, our love, and our longing to know and serve you. Help us to trust your power to keep and direct us. We pray that you will warm our hearts and minds through your Holy Spirit so we may be able to serve you day by day. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you, David. I wonder, are we risk-takers indeed for Jesus? But first, we need to open our eyes, see Jesus, and trust in him. So let's do that now. If you're able, let's stand to sing. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. And it's great to be able to do that together. So as we remain standing, let's declare our faith, along with Christians everywhere, including our own folk who are listening in too. So let's do that in, in the words that are based on Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2. Let's declare together. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even to death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every man, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ do please be seated and Shona's going to come and lead our prayers. Good morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together as a church family and for the fellowship we share. Today, the Bible reminded us that whilst we did not see Jesus in the flesh, 
we are blessed in seeing the miracle of his resurrection through your teachings. As we approach you collectively, we are at different stages of our journey of faith. Guide those of us who are taking our first steps to see the truth of your teaching and in the more well-traveled of us, instill a renewed sense of awe for the resurrection. Your gift of life is through the Lord Jesus Christ, and for this we share our humble thanks. Give us the courage to share this fundamental truth with love. Father, we give you our loving thanks for the bountiful gifts you have bestowed upon us. We pray that you help us find wonder in what we have sometimes taken for granted, and that you support us to care for our inheritance of which we are only custodians. When we see the mundane, let us find a prayerful meditation, and where we see the trivial, let us instead see an act of your love. We see so much suffering and struggle in the world. Along with so many others, the troubles of Ukraine and Gaza are in our minds as, we str as well as struggles closer to home. Give us the strength to share your love where we see pain and injustice and hold our fears where the difficulties inevitably exceed our human capacity. Gracious Father, we humbly pray for forgiveness for where we have failed to live by your word. We often act selfishly or in a short-sighted way. We may say our behavior is acceptable because others do the same or because we have no choice, but we know this is only a reflection of our human weakness. For this, we are truly sorry. You already know our hearts, so grant us the courage and humility to open them freely to you and to your love. We are blessed to be able to celebrate openly and grow in our faith together. We give thanks for the ways that we can do this, including home groups, children's groups, Hope Explored, and the Church Family Away Day. As we pray that these events will strengthen and grow our church family, we also raise to you those who cannot freely worship you due to oppression and persecution. We now share the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom Everything we do in the Lord's name is for not for our gratification, but for his glory. So as we come to the end, towards the end of our service now, we're going to stand to sing again. To God be the glory, great things he has done. <laughs> what a rousing, rousing end to finish nearly finish our service this morning. It's been good to be able to raise our voices and sing praise together.
please be seated. Well, let's pray we can go out rejoicing and indeed open our eyes to see Jesus today and in the coming days. We don't pass round a collection plate, but there is a plate in the lobby and I think also a card reader if you wish to give in that way. But we have a lot to be grateful for. So let's just pray now. We thank you, Father, for the many blessings you give us, often undeserved. We also give thanks and praise for all those who have given so generously of their time and resources in your service in this parish and further afield. Amen. Well, thanks indeed to everyone involved in the service and most of all to you for coming and for you for joining us out there too. If anyone would like prayer either after the service or during the week, do please see one of us afterwards. And if you know of anyone that does or anyone that needs a visit, then similarly do, do let one of the team know. So before a final blessing, let's join together in a closing prayer and the words will be on the screen. Let's say it again. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, Strengthen us to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all, those we love and those we pray for, now and always. Amen. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>